I'll be honest with you guys. Jockey sucks in FC24. It is the worst I have ever seen in the past 3-4 years. And it's just not me. Even the pro players I talk to tell me the same thing. That jockeying is hard in this game. And if you are one-on-one -on -one against a good opponent, you are going to actually suffer. Believe me, it doesn't matter what's your skill level. If you are one-on-one -on -one against a half-decent opponent, he has a massive advantage over you. No matter how you jockey, if you know how to defend or not. If the attacker is one-on-one -on -one and he knows how to play the game, believe me, you are at a disadvantage. So many people actually resort to AI defending. They believe the AI holds the position better than them. The AI is more rewarding because when we are jockeying, the margin of error is so less that it's just not good enough. And without the jockey plus playstyle, jockeying doesn't feel the same way, right? However, I have a solution for that. And today we are going to learn how to make our defense even better. First, we have to focus on the basics of jockeying. Okay, first we have L2 jockey, which is the normal jockey like this where you just hold the jockey button and your player gets the jockey stance and he jockeys in front of the opponent. This is the running jockey where you hold L2 plus R2 and your player actually does the fast jockey. Then there is the gas and brake technique where you use R2 to get close and when you get close you hold L2. Okay, so this is R2, then you hold L2, R2, L2 like this. If you are watching my channel since the past three years, then you would know that I have almost always encouraged to use the gas and brake jockey technique because I believe it gives you the best control and it is overall the best defending technique. And when it comes down to cutting passing lanes, I always recommend that you use L2 plus R2. But this year, it is totally changed. Many things have changed. We are going to actually focus on how we can improve defending by using these jockey techniques plus what we can do to actually minimize the situations where we actually need to press the jockey button because if you are in that 1v1 situation believe me against a half decent player like i said you would struggle so what is the number one way to defend that would be to defend in numbers and defend with a high line because when you're defending in numbers there is a big chance that your players will not get one on one with the opponent because if your defender gets one on one i won't repeat myself it's a bad situation the button i use most of the times to defend is actually the r2 button believe me it is the sprint button and the x button so x and r2 are the buttons that i am mostly using and i use these buttons more than the jockey button itself this year right now i am chasing with davis right see this is where i initiated the jockey stance why because I felt that the opponent might actually cut inside. So I needed to actually get myself in that jockey stance. It is not necessarily to win the ball back, but it just expands our body in a way that now we can cover more ground as opposed to if I wasn't to hold this button. But in previous years, when you would hold the jockey button, most of the times your players will make an auto tackle whenever you are near the opponent. And that made the gas and brake technique so good. Just get near to the opponent, stick close and the AI will do an auto tackle and you would win the ball back. But this year, it doesn't work like that. All right. So see, there are many players running in behind. Here is an auto offside trap. What are we doing? We are defending in numbers. Actually, I am using my CM, Rolfa, to step in front of R9. I am using her so I can step in front of R9 while actually second man pressing with Bellingham. I'm also maintaining my shape. At the same time, I am defending in numbers. This will make sure that they don't get one on one. In previous editions of the game, tackling wasn't used as much because we had the jockey and jockey was so strong that you almost never needed to make a tackle unless you were in an emergency last ditch situation. But now you need anticipate plus on your defenders so you can make those strong tackles because jockeying, like I said, sucks. Look at the red shirts. What is this? This is called defending in numbers. And what buttons am I using right now? I'm using L2 plus R2 and R1. Again, the reasoning is the same. I know these buttons will not help me win the ball back. All right. This is actually a little bit messed up, but this is how you should approach defending if you want to improve. If you approach it as 1v1 defending, you will struggle. Instead, defending in numbers and then using these buttons as a tool to actually defend in numbers and then wait for the opponent to take a loose touch or when he is not having a ball contact and at that very moment go with the circle tackle a standing tackle to win the ball back you will see in a moment 
Let's see, what am I doing? I'm actually getting my players back to defend, right? Some players make this stupid mistake where they would select this guy on the edge of the box. It's not a guy, it's a girl, it's Alexia, but they would select Alexia and then they would let their defenders do the job. That is also incorrect. You don't want to over rely on the AI and you don't want to over rely on your own ability. You need to have a mix between these things. Okay, you need to have a balance 50 50 because the game isn't very rewarding with 1v1 defending. So I am still having some control over my defense while controlling Davis and second man pressing. But at the same time, I'm also going to rely somewhat on AI by putting more shirts behind the ball. So Graham is second man pressing Mbappe, who is the ball carrier. I am defending the pass inside to Mia Ham with Bellingham. All right, there is only one guy free on the edge of the box, and that is Bruno Fernandes. But if you look at this, Rolfo, she is my CM. She's also behind, and my team will play an offside trap. Remember, I said high line in combination with player positioning. Player positioning is the way to go in FC24. Jockeying literally sucks. The less you rely on jockey, the more success you will have. I am using Jockey only as a tool to give me better positioning like I am doing with Bellingham so I can cover more ground. Alright, I would not challenge the opponent in a 1v1 with Jockeying because I know the odds of him beating me are higher compared to me winning the ball back because that is just how Jockeying works this year. And I don't have anyone with the Jockey Plus playstyle. See, the opponent is forced to turn back. We play an offside trap. What do we do in this situation? Again, we switch. And we win the ball back with Rio Ferdinand. Did I need to tackle? Did I need to use the jockey button to win the ball back? Did I need to put myself in a 1v1 situation? The answer is no. None of these things were required. But I won the ball back because of the player positioning. So if you focus and actually pay more attention on how you position your defenders, you would have more success. But at the same time, some people give you this advice that, okay, just control one CM and run back. The amount of people who make this mistake during the coaching sessions is insane. If you select one guy and just randomly run back with him, what are you achieving? You're achieving nothing. Everything you do in this game needs to carry a purpose. That purpose could be either pressing the opponent, cutting a passing lane. If you're doing none of those two things, then you're not gonna go far. Here is an example of being aggressive, right? I won, I lost the ball and just see what happens. What do I do? I am looking to win the ball back. I see there is an opportunity to win the ball back. I select Alexia and run towards the opponent and get the ball back, alright? It is all about actually looking for the moment where you can win the ball back. Most of the times the button I am using to defend is the R2 button like you can see on the screen. And why am I using the R2 button? Because it allows me to put my players in positions where they weren't before. And according to the game situation, I can win the ball back. Here I made a mistake with Davis where I overcommitted him inside, which is why the pass went through. If you look at this, I'm too aggressive with my fullback. At this moment, I should let him go. But I assume that maybe he would look for a pass to R9. But he is a good player, so he doesn't go for that. But most players in this situation would try to force the ball to R9. Where Davis would actually win the ball back, alright? So what I am trying to show you today is, guys, I am in the same boat as you. Jockeying sucks, but if you focus on player positioning, your game will go to the next level. And this is how you actually focus on player positioning. All right. By selecting more than one player at a time, being really good with the right stick switching and defending in numbers. Now you might say, but you are jockeying right now. Again, it is just to put myself in a position where I can cover more ground. All right. What do I do then? Then I switch off of Rio Ferdinand. And again, I switch to Renard and try to defend with her. If you are close to the opponent, you need Anticipate Plus. Without Anticipate Plus, you wouldn't win many tackles. And if you would win tackles, they might be 50-50 tackles where you might give away a penalty. So that is why Anticipate Plus is a really useful playstyle this year. And you have to use it if you want to be successful at this. Look at this defensive play from me. Do I actually focus on jockeying or winning the ball back? Or just selecting one guy and running back like a headless chicken? No. I'm focusing on more than one player, all right? I'm focusing on all 10 players on the outfield. And actually, I'm selecting them and running with them, putting them into positions where either they could win the ball back by pressing the opponent or where they can actually intercept the ball. Two things. If there is nothing being achieved, I wouldn't go for that opportunity. 
there are two types of people one who think okay i will run back with one guy i will select a midfielder and i'll keep running back with him and i would win the ball back and there's another kind of person who thinks okay i'm going to put constant pressure and i would win the ball back both of these approaches are wrong you have to learn correct player positioning you have to use all the defending tools and you need to use them strategically jockeying isn't only supposed to be used when you are in a 1v1 situation you can use jockey to cover more ground and you can use the sprint button to actually cover more distance as well all right covering more ground when you are in a standing position for that reason use jockey when you need to actually chase for that reason you use sprinting but without having know how of your formation and your tactics you will get far so in order to perfect player positioning and defending i would suggest that you so in order to perfect player positioning and defending i would suggest that you play one formation for majority of the time and actually master that and also know that everyone makes mistakes but if you grasp this concept today your defense will go to the next level with enough practice